אוקיי. Today we will focus on building database in SAP HANA. How do we formulate database in SAP HANA? So, I am in this perspective called SAP HANA model arms. Okay, and I already have the system. I'm just logging into it. This one filter for see all these are your schemas, and we also refer schema as your databases. Let's say we are connected to HANA system. And then we would like to build a database for an application. So let's say we want to build certain application. And this application would need some data to be stored in the database. Now, when you, are, when you got to store the data, ultimately you got to formulate the different set of tables in which the data would go and store. This. So if I need to formulate my database, I need to go about creating the schema, which will be referred as database. And into the schema, you start building up all your application tables. Now, First, we'll start. How do I go about creating my schema and how do I start formulating the database in HANA? Okay. Now, you can open your SQLator. Once you have connected to the system, you can right click on this. You can say what? Open SQL console. This will open your uh, SQL editor here. Or you can also click on this icon. Open SQL console. Anyway, it's fine. And this one. Okay, so now <clears throat> first thing is I would like to create a schema. First. Now, when you got to create schema, you don't see most of the database artifacts like table, view, all those stuff. SAP has given you the UI screen where you can go about creating or you can create with SQL. You can use SQL statements to create your any of the database objects or also UI, but most of them have UI and SQL. But for some of them, you have to go with SQL only. First. Now, when it comes to creating schema, you have to go with SQL, but there is a different flexibility of creating it from UA, but let's not worry now. Okay. Now, so I want to, and uh, in a SQL, when you prefix with double dash, it is comment. Okay. So I would like to go about creating a schema here uh, and the statement. So for creating schema, it has to be with SQL statement. There's no other flexibility. You will say um, create schema and uh, schema name this is how you have to formulate this create schema and name of the schema what you would like to create this so if this is a or you can also extend this statement this way create schema so and so owned by username okay now look at this <clears throat> if i if I go with this SQL statement saying create schema schema name, it does create a database. It, we can refer schema as a database, schema, anything is okay. Okay. It does create the schema. And this will be accessed only by the user who is actually creating it. If I just say create schema schema name, the schema what gets created will be accessed by the person user who has who has created that schema. Let's say we have user one and user two. We have logged in as user one, but I would like to create a schema which will be accessed by user two bus. Then I'll say create schema schema name owned by, I log in with user one, but I'm going to create a schema which will be accessed by user two bus. Then I would say create schema schema name owned by user two. That's how it is. Okay, but I've, log I've logged in with system user. I would like to create some, some schema which I will have access to. So I'm not worried on who owned by. So I'll say what? Mm. Create mm. a schema, then what is it? Cubix. So 
So 8 cubics is my schema. So I'm going to use this schema. Select this and execute this. Now when I execute this statement, you get this information saying this statement has been executed successfully. It has taken so much of time. Okay. Now once the schema has been executed, you should all your database artifacts will be in which folder? Catalog or containers? Catalog. Now when I refresh this, I should see a schema called 8 cubics. I don't want to see others, so I just want to filter it for mm, 8 cubics. Now I have the schema. Okay, boss. And I will have access to this schema because I have logged in with system user. I have created my schema, so this user will have complete access onto this schema. So you can do create, delete, alter, anything you can be doing on the schema. Okay. But if I want this to be associated to a different user, then you will say what? Create schema so and so owned by different users. That is one. <clears throat> one, more, one more point to be noted is uh, for every user we create in HANA, for every user you create in HANA, it will create a schema with that name. And that user will have access to that schema. For example, say, how do we create new user? Let's go to security. Mm. What is users? Right click. Say what? New user. So let create new user saying say, Cubex user say 81 and some password. And just say activate. Okay. I've not granted anything, but just say activate this. Now what I'll do, I want to connect to the same HANA system with the different user, which user 81. Select the same connection, right click, you can say what, add, add the same system, but what? You can straight away say add system where you start specifying all the server details, but if it's already given, you say right click, I would it connect to the same system, but with a different user. Cubex hmm. <coughs> user 81 and then And when you log in for the first time, it does ask you for the change of the password. So, <clears throat> so this is a, this is a system connected with the new user 81. If he gets into catalog folder, you will get to see a schema called Cubex user 81. For every user you create, you would have a schema with the same username. And, and this user will have complete access on the schema. Okay. Now what I want, <clears throat> next, next important thing is, let's say I have this schema called 8 cubex. Now I would like to authorize this user, what? Cubex user 81 to have access to that schema called 8 cubex. This is all fine, right? Till you. Now I have logged in with system user and we have created a schema called 8 cubics. Now I would like to provide authorizations on this schema 8 cubics to a different user called what? Cubex user 81. How do I grant that? Okay. Now what is that you want to grant? I just want to grant only select. You should only read data from that schema, nothing else. No alteration, nothing. Okay. I can, I can do this either with UI or with SQL statement. I can grant the authorizations on this schema to the user with SQL statement or with UI also. Let me show you with UI. Uh, let me get into the user with system user. System user will have all the authorizations. Uh, what is this? I'll, go, I'll open this 81 user again. What is this here? <coughs> You'll have a tab called object privileges. In this object privileges, you'll control the authorization specific to catalog objects, all the database authorization, database object authorizations, and the schema, table, view, all the, if you want to provide authorizations on some of the database artifacts or database objects, we provide authorizations in this table, this table, object privileges. Now I'll go to object privileges. By default, you'll have this schema. Should I give him a, another schema here? I'll say what? What I'll say? Add. Mm. What is the schema name? You want to give him eight cubics. Select this schema, say OK. So I provide authorizations for this schema. And on this schema, what activity should we be able to do? Should we be able to create anything on this? Alter, drop, or execute, select, or what does it do? Select or something, let's say. And you and you want you would like to allow this user to grant authorization to others also. 
he will have authorization to select read from that schema any object and from there he can access he can provide authorization to different user again okay and this act with ui you can do this way okay now if you open this if you open the user you will see the scheme has been he has been authorized for this schema here right now once this is done if i go to the connection where of this user and if i refresh once will you start seeing eight cubex now now we'll have access but he'll only have authorizations to read us right mm -hmm. i can do that way and one more way of doing it is let's say i'll go to this 81 and i will remove this again i won't clean this i don't know i would like to remove the authorizations from back it's like revoked i have revoked the authorizations now when i do this when i get to this user just refresh you'll no more c8 cubic <coughs> so like this i can also grant I can also grant the authorizations on this schema to a different user with select statement, with SQL statement also. Uh, make sure I have connected to this SQL, SQL console with which user was. So system user, so system user is executing this command. Yes, system user will have authorizations to control other users also. So how do you grant him? Say grant. Mm. What operations do you want to allow him to do on the schema? Select. Grant. Select. Uh, on what? You want to grant select on what? On schema. Mm. Which schema is it? Mm. 8 cubix. To whom? To cubix user 81. It's it's same as that. And if you want to allow him to give up, you remove that yes and no. I'll say with. Mm. When I say with grant option, means it's like I'm setting yes there. Anything you can do with UI, you can obviously do with SQL statement also. So I'm granting select on schema 8 cubics to you to user cubics user 81 with grant option. I'm doing the same. Whatever I've done with UI, I'm doing with the SQL statement now. Just select this and say what? Execute. Now executed it. Even now you will see that this user will have access to that 8 cubics now. Yes. Will it do changes in the UI automatically? If I go to 81 and open the definition, you will see that it's been enabled the same way what I've done. Whatever you've done with UI, I could have done with, I, I've done the same thing with this question with grant option also. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Okay, this is about the scheme of this. I would like to remove that connection. I don't need this anymore. So that is about schema. And you know that by default, there will be some default schema, sysbi and sysbig, very important. We'll come to that later. So I've got my schema ready now. And under the schema, I can go over creating any of these database objects. Any, if we refer them as database artifacts or database objects like what? Uh, tables, views, triggers, synonyms, sequences, procedures, all this can be, we can go over developing all this under the schema. Every database object will be qualified with the schema name. Say if, if I refer to some table, I should specify to which schema does this table belong. To. It's always referred as schema name dot table, schema name dot view, schema name dot procedure, schema name dot column view, anything. All your database objects are qualified by database name or nothing but your schema names. Okay, boss. Uh -huh. So there's nothing in it. It's just a blank database, which I would like to formulate now. The next point is I would like to focus on creating my database table. <clears throat> so you might have created this table in some other database SQL server, or you might have created an SAP applications with SC level. You give table name, say create, you give description, you give all same. You can go about creating table with UI also. You don't have to write your SQL statement in creating a table. I can create it with UI also. Now we're going to see about creating a table with UI now. But do you remember we have two types of tables, row store and the column store in HANA? Yeah. So look at the, how do I go about creating it? Uh, select this tables folder. In the catalog folder, expand your schema. Then you will find a tables folder. Now tables folder, you can create angel. 
right click button and, and right click and double click and the so, just right click on it and you see an option called what uh, what is new table and uh, you tell me from there on once you get to that you should be able to tell me now uh, new table what is what is it asking me name of the table uh, so wait, I'm going with simple table. So what is the name of the table? Employee. And then what is it here? Schema. Under which schema do you want to create? I want it to be under 8 cubex only. What is it here? Column, column store. store. We'll discuss on this table type later, but not now. Whether you want to go with row store or column. I want to go with what? Column store. Okay. That's where you choose a type of table what you want to create. Then what does this tab says? Column. What do you understand with this? Every table would have columns. I should list out what columns do I need to have in this table. So I just want to go with uh, employee number. And this is the name of the technical name of the column. And this will be what? A data type. You'll have var care. Like any of any database, you'll have the same. Var care, n var care, integer, tiny integer, double, float, timestamp, binary, blob. You'll have all these data types available there. I'm just going with uh, var care is fine. Or I can say integer. <laughs> For integer, you don't specify any length, and I would I, enable this would make it as what primary keys. You remember in SLA we have checkbox. You just have to click this indicate and not nullable means it cannot be null. Okay, and you want to provide some description here. Uh, say what comment is like employee uh, what number. That's it. I just want another name as what EMP name, and you can also give space. No problem. You can also give space underscore is also allowed. Varker, if it is Varker, I need to specify the length uh, 20. And then I would say mm -hmm. comment as what? Nothing but this employee name. I just want it's a department number. Uh, I want this to be integer again. Not, this is not a primary key. And then I'll say. That's it. I want a table. I wanted a table with these three columns. That is it. Let's not worry on these now. Just say active. Just say active. This is my table. So when I activate, when I say activate this, internally it is actually executing some word. What is this? It is executing some SQL statements in doing this. It is all you go to creating table with the UI, but when you activate internally, it does formulate the SQL corresponding SQL statements and get it executed and have the table created for you. Yeah. And you see, if I refresh here, you see this table. You can suppose you want to edit this table. After the table has been created, you want to edit it. I can still do that. I can just select this table, right click, and say what? Uh, open definition. You get this table out here. Just select this table, right click, and say what? What is it? But it is not editable. You should make sure you enable this option, edit. Now, you put a secret, you checkbox enable in the now you, you can edit it. Let's say uh, you want to add one more column, say EMP cell. I would set this as uh, decimal. Then I'll say what is this? Uh, employee cell. This is 10 of 2 is like uh, two decimal because it is a decimal specific decimal points. Like this, you can edit the, your table. Okay. And this is a tab you can basically create your indexes. We'll come to that later. And there are some uh, further properties which we can maintain. So there are some tables like global temporary table. Um, we'll see those table types. Um, and then in the runtime information, you can basically see how much memory has been occupied by this table. Look at this. It's a column store, right? Look at this. How much memory has been occupied by what? Main storage, how much has been occupied for delta storage? And down, suppose if this table has been partitioned. Can we partition the table? Yes. If the table is partitioned, below it will show me all the partitions, what is there created under this table. And all this information is available on this page. This is how you can create a table with the UI. Hmm. Next option is, can I also create, uh, I think the same way if I draw, in the drop, if I select roster, it becomes what? Roster. See, this icon will tell you uh, all this. Say, if you see, 
if you see the lines in the columns vertical like this it means it's a column store table let's say i create one i'll say what roster mm. This will be a row store table first. What is table create? Uh, row table. Okay, good. If I refresh, you should see the difference here. Uh, you see icon indicating horizontal line that indicates it's a row store table. But while creating, there's not, nothing much difference here. For you, just uh, accept the option row store or column store, creating a table either row or column is pretty much same. Boss. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, good question. He's saying, can we change the type of table once it has been created from row store to column store? Good. Uh, he's saying, let's see, it's created a column store table. Can I convert that to a row store table? Uh, but look at this. If I open the definition, if I want to edit this table, when I go to the edit, I can't do this. When I go to the edit, edit mode of this table, I can't change the table type. With the UI, you don't have a flexibility of converting your table type from row store to column or column to row store. But uh, in the SQL, do we have a statement called alter? When you want to create a new database subject, you'll use create statement. When you want to change the definition of a database subject, we use what? Alter. By using alter statement, I can alter the definite type of the table. For example, if I go to see, I can do this way. Hmm. I guess alter uh, table. Which table you want to alter? The column row to them. Alt, I would like to alter this table. Mm. Mm. Type. Mm. Alter table. So and so type column. Alter table. Table type. Alter the table. One second. Alter table so and so, alter type is what? Is already column with them. Sorry, sorry, sorry. See, there is already columns. So I'm changing it to rows. Done. If I refresh this now, so what is this now? Now it shows it as what? Roster. So I'll say uh, again, I will execute the same. Mm. Alter table so and so, alter type, alter the type as what? Column. Then you should see this as what? Back to what? Column store. Table. So we can change the type of table by using alter statement, but not from the UI bus. Okay. <coughs> can we change the data? Yeah, even when there's data, I can still change it. Even when there's data in this table, I can still change the type of the table. No issues. Mm, ah, okay. We are at creating a table, right? Mm. Now the point is, can I create table even with the SQL statement? Yes. Now if, you, if I'm not comfortable writing SQL statement, what you can do, you can just open up some UI one and then right click on this and you can say what is export X square. This will give me the SQL statement, what it was used to create the table. So you want to go with a different name, I can just change this name as uh, 01 and execute all the statement now. This will create another table for me as well. Employee zero. I can just export the SQL statement from the graphical one and understand what it is it's saying. What does it say? Create a type of column or type of table, table and the name of the table, and then you're listing out uh, you're listing out all the columns one by one, and then separate with commas, and then you specify the primary key of the table. And then the table is will come to this unload priority auto merge on this. Clear this was and then this is this is about comment is about what those descriptions, nothing else. Clear this.
Max thousand, I think. Thousand twenty-four. I'll I'll come to the uh, exceptions. Uh, no. Size of a table is two TB. Size of a column is depends on on the day type also. If it is varchar, you can go with huge, but it depends. If you go with text, it will have lots of length again. If you go with string, it'll extend, but there's some limitation again. There's some like thousand twenty-four or some. There is some limitation. Thousand twenty-four. Okay, so I would like to create my table with the UI. I can just say like this. So I just want to create my table. I can just create simple. So I just want to create simple column store table and. I'll say create and I'll use a keyword word column for column store table, row for row store table, and create table name of the schema in which you want the table to be created. And this is the table name, and these are the columns column one, date type is int, and not null. I just I want to set it as not null uh, constraint and what it, it's going to be a primary key and employee name and where care 20. And now, and if I just execute this, this is EMP, right? Table name is EMP. Now you'll see the table created first. What is table? EMP is a table. Next, if, if you just use a keyword as what? Row. Mm -hmm. There's already an EMP row table. It says cannot duplicate table. I'm saying EMP row 0, 1, and then next. EMP rows, it is created row store table again. And the point is, if I don't specify any type, if I just say create table, what table does it create? Row. If I refresh, so tell me what is this? Uh, if you don't specify anything, by default it is row. And for column, you have to explicitly specify it by using the keyword columns. And one more thing is, uh, so I'm trying to create a table called Matplot. I want it as column store table. So you'll have create table with the table name and you specify the list of columns what I want. Mm. So I'm specifying column name in double quotes, table name in double quotes, schema name. It's not mandatory that you specify in double quotes. If, but if I want to enable a space in this, any special characters, then double code becomes mandatory. So even if, if you don't have double, uh, special characters in the identifier, either column name, table, you don't need double codes. But we don't know when we will use it. So start practicing with double codes. Whether it has got special characters, it still concerns it. Okay. So I want mat. Mm. I want this as integer. And I want this as not null bus. Then I want to have what? Um, plant. I want it as var care of length. I want as what 20, and I don't want this also to be null. Something like say color var care of 20. That's fine. But do I need to define the primary key on this? Now in the previous case, I was just specifying primary key as I, I used the keyword primary key just side of the column. But here. My requirement is I want plant and metal both to be primary key, like com uh, you'll say composite at composite <laughs> primary key. When two or more columns together as like this, you can have 16 columns as primary key max. When two or more columns together, we refer to comp. How do you define composite key? Mm. Once you list out the columns, we'll say uh, we use a keyword at the bottom, primary key. And what all columns you want? Mat, mm, comma, then what? Plant. Because if it is multiple columns, you, you can't specify it here. Okay. okay, and then 
you'll have a table called mat plant where you see both the columns is primary key. metal see look at this mat and plant both are primary key into this table okay fine Okay, I have this table. I just want to insert some data into this table and this, I just want to see. But I'm not teaching about insert statement, but just a, a simple, since we have a table, I just want to insert some two records and then see the data into this. So if you don't know about insert statement, you can say generate, you can right click on this table, generate and say what? Insert statement. This will give you a base, how it has to be. You say insert into what? Uh, yeah, always database object is qualified by the schema name. So specify insert into this table values. Now first is I know it's employee number, so I'll say mm, one. Next is employee name. Say, then it is department number. Uh, I'll say ten. Then it's salary. Say, I'll say two hundred dot fifty something. If you see when I'm specifying the integers, I'm specifying without single quotes. And when you want to specify a string or text, it has to be in single quotes. So select this and say execute. It says, uh, you get a message, it has been inserted. Same thing, I would like to insert another two, three records. I'll say ID is two and ID is three and ID is four. Okay, so I won't make this as 15. And I just want. And I want to insert these three records also. Done. So now this table should have the data bus. If I get into this table, right click, say what? Open content, I can see the data bus. This row number is by default. It's a system column which tells me the row number. Don't worry on that. These are the actual column. Employee number, employee name, department number, and employee cell. So you can go to insert data into this table and right click and you can see the content also. And if you want to use this table and do some, we call that data profiling. I just want to see what is the total net sale, total salaries, or if you want to see what are distinct employee names or distinct departments. I want to do some kind of profiling on understand deep into the table because if I, if I just say content it is showing me the content of the table but if i want to do some more profiling and analyze the day the let's say the table is really huge i want to do analyze then what i can do I can right click on this table this is not for the individual this is for you to understand the data in the table you can say open data preview you can see the raw data like this or you can see distinct values of any of this um, I know there are four records, but department distinct is only 10, 20, and 30. If you see, if you just drag it, it says for 10, the value 10 department, I've got two rows. For uh, department values 20, I see one row, and for 30, I see one row. I can see unique values. Like, or if I go to analysis, I can do this. I want to see total value, employee salary. Total employee salary is around something so and so. Yeah. You can see this in chart form, or you can choose whatever chart you want. Or department wise i want to spread this out so i want to see this as a pie chart i can change this out you can visualize the data in any way you want table format grid format html format apart from department i also want to see employee number <coughs> not number let's say i want to see employee name you see and i want to see this as article based on the department and employee name wise i see a split table grid or html for anything you can see this is more of you are trying to analyze the data in these tables. Then we can get, go with data. This is not for this is not like reporting anywhere on for India. This is for you to analyze the data into those tables. And the column low in AMA values, any values, you want to do some more of data profiling and understand the profiling of the data into the database, you can get to use this option. <coughs> okay, boss. Um, we, we, we were able to insert some, some, some sample data and then see the data, right? Now, you, even if I connect this um, with a different user, 
what is it 81 and we have given him select authorizations right for on eight cubics even he should be able to see the data in the, to the tables one good data conclusion because i said you'll have authorizations for uh, select is for reading you can just read data from there okay but if he tries to change the definition Hmm. You cannot execute art. It doesn't have authorizations to change the table. It's only for reading. Okay. So you understood this is like normal uh, table where the now, once the different user has got access to this schema, he is also able to see the definition. He is also able to see the content. Okay, but there are different types of tables we can play with now. Okay. So, the next point is, let's say I already have a table called employee uh, with some data in it. Can I create a table similar to this kind of table again by using like copy from, let's say I want to create a copy of this table with say with along with the data or without data I can do. I can say it this way. Um, create column, hmm, table in which scheme I want, eight, UX, copy employee, hmm, and you can say as and you can provide a definite you can have a select saying select mm. star from which table if you see this select this will give me the data this is like reading all the data of this table i would like to use this sub query i would like to use this if i execute this selection it just gives me all the data and i would like to use this result to create my table i'll say create table so and so as by using this sub select when I do, when I use this sub select and create, it creates with the data. Yeah? Okay. I can use this statement like copy. If I can use the sub select on the table to create a copy, copy employee. So you see this with the data. Okay. And you can also say, uh, create column table, uh, copy employee zero one. And you can use like, like, uh, employees. <clears throat> Normally, when I use this like operator and create a table, it does not create, it does not copy the data. Only the structure is copied. If you copy employee 01 and you see, if you go to content, you see the structure, but there is no data copied. When I create a copy table by using the sub query, it, it creates the copy of the table with the data. But when I when I create a copy, say create column table like so and so by using this like operator, the only structure is copied. There's no data copied along with it. But using like operator, I also can copy with the data by using this. Say um, create copy employee zero to table like this table. Hmm. If I use this uh, operator, what with data? It creates cop with like operator, but I'm going to create with with what? Uh, with data. I can use like operator, and if I use the extra command, say with the data, it copies with the data also. And even when I'm creating a table with this sub select, by default it takes data, right? By default it takes data, but I, I can use sub select, but try to create without data also. I'll say with uh, either default with data, if you want to control it not to have data, then I'll say what? With no data. No If you see the definition, you only have structure, but sorry. If you see the content, you only see the definition, but there's no. Even though I'm using sub select to copy the table, if I use the keyword with the data or without no data, I can control whether data to be used to be copied or not. Okay. Hmm. Next one. 
you'll have some concept called global tables. You know about primary key and foreign key, that's okay. Every table will have primary key, which is unique, and foreign key, like when the primary key of one table takes for another table, becomes foreign. Just have, it is recorded, just look at this and you can handle it. Yeah, next one, uh, there's some new concept called global, global temporary tables. Global, you know, but now row store and column, so those are like normal standard tables. But while creating table, you can go over creating different types, something like global temporary table is one type of it. Okay, temporary tables, global temporary, local temporary, different types of what is what we have to say. Hmm. Now we'll say, uh, Normal SQL, it's not so different. There are some changes to that SQL, otherwise, some keywords, otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, no. <clears throat> I'm just using this. We are focusing on global temporary tables, except this keyword, it would rest all is same. So, I'm saying create, uh, instead of just saying column, I'm just saying global temporary column tables. Global temporary column table. Yeah, good. So I'm just creating this table with uh, EMP ID and some name. Sorry, sorry. So I'm just creating this global temporary table. And I do I see this table here? EMP temp column, yeah. EMP, I'm able to see that, okay, and I insert some data, I'm inserting some four records into this table, okay, and I, I'm just running a select, which will basically show me data from the select start from this table, result, I'm just seeing this four records, okay, boss, okay, now I take this, uh, statement and open one more SQL and I run this. I don't see any data. I don't see any data here. Okay, now let me close this out. So this you have table, right? If I try to see the content, do I see any data in it? There's no data. But let's say I open a new session. I open a SQL session. I insert some data. Okay. Now within this session, I get to see data in this table. If I just close this session and run a select on this table, nothing but as good as reading select star from what? Huh? I don't see any data. So when I say global temporary table, the definition of the table is global. Means even if I go to a different user or different any session you get, eight cubics, one good table can be somewhere. EMP temp, you can, so the structure of the table or definition of the table is global. You can see it from any number of sessions, but the content of the table is local specific to that session alone. Our session low data in insert JSON, our session work can be The content of this table is specific to that particular session. That is called as global temporary tables. Actually, I went to that if you see. In a further properties law, they would have said this as temporary table type as well, global. Suppose if you're creating with UI, you can, in the drop down, you can choose it as global. That becomes a global temporary column store. You can know, table create this, for example, new table. You can know, further properties scale, you can drop down, set this as what? Global. If you want to create this global temporary table from the UI, you just have to use this option. Temporary table type is global. 
So when you create a global temporary table, what does it mean? The structure of the table is global. Everyone can use a table. You can fire a select on the table always. But the content of the table is specific to that particular session. Our, se our runtime session low math room data. It is more, can I say more like an internal table? Internal table would be internal table. Would be. Definition is also not global, but this is where the definition is global. But when you you can use this in your writing stored process when you want to store some temporary result. So what happens? Only during runtime of the procedure, the data is stored in the table. Once the once the process is out, once the session is closed, you the data memory is freed again. There's no data stored. In it. Okay, boss. Mm -hmm. Next. Then I, there is a concept called again the global temporary table. Then there is a concept called local temporary table. Okay, SQL. Okay, this is, uh, I just use the keyword what now? Local. Instead of using the keyword global, I say what? Local, okay. Create local temporary column stored. It's a column stored table which is local and temporary. And whenever you're creating local temporary table, the table name must be prefixed with hash, compulsory. The local temporary tables, uh, the name of the tables must be prefixed, prefixed with hash here, okay. Mm -hmm. And one more point, these tables can never have primary key. There will be primary key under the local temporary tables cannot have primary key. Mm -hmm. So I'm just creating this table with two columns again, same employee ID and all this stuff. What is the name of the table you create? You remember, EMP temp uh, local column. That's my table. The table's name is created. And then I'm just inserting some mm, four records into this table. One, two, three, and prata, prata, prata. And I'm just running a select. So it just shows me those four records. Okay, Nana. So what I'll do now, first thing you have to observe is what is the table name? EMP temp local column. Uh, refresh. You see, do you see the table name? EMP temp local glow, EMP temp local glow. Okay. Close this session out and open a session again. We already executed these statements, right? We already created table, select was uh, inserted was all. Now let me just run select. Two errors today. There's no data in the table under the table pair It says there is no table with this name under this. So I've just in what whichever the session you create this table, it is valid only for that session. And once the session is out, the table is no more visible. In the exact internal table only during the runtime of that session, you create this temporary table, you insert data into it, you use those, you use that data. Then once once we are out of that session, the table is dropped and data is also dropped. No more memory allocated for the table. That is called as local temporary table. And when you um, with UI, you cannot create this local temporary table. It has to be created from the SQ because UI will be a global lag. So you don't have the top while creating UI, you don't have the option of local temporary. You have to go with SQL and just say create local temporary column store table, what you want. That's it. normal column list data types is all common. And the, the definition of the table is local to that session and content is also local to that session. In case of global, what is happening? Definition is global, but the content is local to that particular session. But here the definition of the table and Content of the table is also local to that session only. That's the difference between global and temporary tables. Okay. Okay. Uh, next logging. Idem uh, little bus actually with the consulting. Can we have table? Can we have table primary? 
for global you can have you can have primary key but for local you can't have primary key next is in which scenario you do something so let's say you're writing some stored procedures you want to store some temporary results which are specific to that sessions then i can go using this uh, global or temporary tables you want to make definition global but content i want to make it specific to that only during run time of the stored procedure i want to allocate the memory then i can use global or local okay tell me if i can hmm idi pedda concept em kadana you just uh, hmm the some concept so even when you creating this uh, table when there is a property called what no, no log by default logging and then you, if you want to set it as no logging we use this option no log now what does it mean when you say no logging look at this default it is logging and you can control the property to be set as what no log uh, actually what happens is uh, normally if it is temporary or global it is the data is becoming specific to session what it what it is here um, i insert lot of data into this table once it reaches if the memory is reaches 80% of the memory storage this data will be freed into this table when i set it as no logging what happens once it reach when is the main memory reaches 80% of the usage the data in this table will be dropped after certain time retention period what is specified let's say if i specify as uh, 300 seconds after 300 seconds this data in this table will be removed only if the main memory usage is 80% so the concept but if main memory usage is not 80% you will still see data even after 300 seconds you will still see data in this table it should satisfy both it should work it should overcome 300 seconds okay and then your ram should be used by 80% then this data will be freed in this table that is called as no logging option hmm. here you can say look at the simple uh, So if you see, I'm just creating column store table. I'm saying what? Yes, if it is SQL, you say no logging retention is what? 300 to 300 seconds or not? If it is UI, you you don't have any time. You just say what? Uh, say no logging in the top and further properties. I so run this, and you you will insert. You will still see this data, but my my RAM is not used. But, but when does the data? It is global, general, normal like type. What is uh, employee number logging? This is a table. You can see as a global table. You can see the content in a different sessions. All, but when is this table dropped? After it crosses 300 seconds, and if the RAM usage is 80%, then the data is dropped into this table. That is called as logging or no log. And, um, then we have something called auto merge. Do you know what is merging? Your column store will have delta table, main table. and to move the data from delta table to main table we do what delta merge and delta merge will have lots of different types and where a type na auto merge na non auto auto merge ante system will take care of merging it and rest all we have to, we have to do smart merge gaani forced and will not worry on that brain unto while creating table you can specify auto merge should be enabled or not while creating table if you enable auto merge on the on auto merge then your merge dog which is a system process will take care about triggering merging on this table if you switch off the automat you have to explicitly you control it to trigger the merging on the table and so while creating table we can control whether the automat should be switched on or switched off and okay boss so while creating table if you if you doing this you would sql to know so if you use this uh, if you don't use this keyword what does it mean auto merge is enabled on this while creating table you switch on the auto merge or no if you switch on auto merge what happens system will 
uh, within the system you'll have a process called merge dog which will take care about triggering the merging process on this table and if you say um, uh, if you say no auto merge system is no way responsible for triggering merging we have to explicitly trigger merging on this table either it is smart merge or forced merge or critical merge or we'll see that later system responsible to unda leda system automatic cheskolante auto merge on chestam system cheskodu nenu cheskunta ante auto merge off chestam if you just leave it as auto merge it is like switched on and if i use this keyword no ante auto merge is switched off let's say we also have this function let's say while creating table you have switched on the auto merge later i can change the definition of the table using alter statement and switch off the merging also while creating table let's say you have you created you switched on the auto merge i can use alter statement and switch off the auto merge or let's say creating while creating table you switch it you switch off the auto merge and while i can use alter and switch switch on the auto merge i can change or i can change the definition of the table by using alter statement on the merging auto merge functionality what is the best practice generally if it is for bw on hana if there is some applications which are is saying whether should i on or should i, should I off this if you are using hana for as a database of certain applications we would basically switch off the auto merge and applications will control when the merging should be triggered in the bw process chain or something we would be triggering the merging bus. if you are if you are if you are using this as a normal stand alone database then i would go with what auto merging where system will take care of merging because there is no application which can do that if i have some ecc application or bw application which is sitting on top of hana then i'll give control to the application when it wants to trigger let it trigger the merging but if i'm using stand alone hana database there is no application sitting on top of it then i'll give control to the hana system to perform the merging then i'll go with what auto merge stand alone database lo i'll give control to the hana database to trigger whether merging or not by using what switching on the auto merge if i have some, if i'm leveraging applications running on the hana database i'll give control allow control give control to the application to trigger merging then i'll i'll switch off the auto merge and give control to the applications let it trigger whenever it wants inka depth maaradte let's say if it is bw let's say you have a cube and the underlying table of a cube is your column store table let's say you're loading some millions of data bus assume the fact table of your cube is switched on with auto merge bus and you're loading huge amount of data bus millions of data at, at, at the middle of the load when you loaded some let's say 5 lakhs or 6 lakh records the decision function of auto merge is satisfied and system triggers auto merge them during the middle when it is in the process of loading it is triggering merging bus that will affect my loading performance so i'll prefer to switch on the auto merge do all finish of all my loading then trigger my merging in that case will i prefer switching on or switching off this switching off or the auto merge so if i'm working on some applications where my hana database is been used as a database for it then i'll give the application i'll give the control to the application to trigger the merging if i'm using stand alone hana database i'll give control to hana database itself to trigger the merging if i need to give control to the hana database to trigger merging then i'll, I'll switch on the auto merge application kill it i'll switch off the auto merge okay do we have the syntax shell like ecc syntax yeah we'll always we'll always if there's a pdf document i'll tell you how to use the syntax doc we'll always have the syntax document for this sql statements also yeah. what is it yeah we just use this keyword and then no no without no it is like what enabling automobiles and no is like switching off the automobiles uh, i'm just creating this table where automobiles just switch down switch up so so this is like creating a table without auto merge now if there's no auto merge then what i need to explicitly control the merging process when we need to control the merging process it could be smart merge or it could be force merge or critical merge or what we'll see all what we'll see all this depth to mal juddamu but this is while creating table we can control it to switch on or switch off the auto merge anta varuthe Yeah. What is the default? By default, automatic is switched on. Uh, you see, you create this table, right? You never specified anything while creating UI. You don't have control whether to switch on or switch off. 
if i see this export sql and see this what does this say auto merge on button no no ledan mundra no one inte appudu auto merge off annattu so by default when you create table auto merge is been switched on okay no and if you explain use a keyword no auto merge to switch it off okay screen lo ui lo ui lo ledu then then i'll do use alter statement to alter the thing is saying you only have the option of switching on or switching off in the sql statement let's say the user who has created this table in the ui and is activating by default what happens automatically switched on then how do i switch it off then i'll let explicitly use the alter statement on this table say switch it switch the uh, merging off oh, sorry auto merge off that's it. we can do that next uh, there is something called unload priority boss other other day we have discussed something called unload priority uh, what is this unload priority boss we have concepts called load and unload when you say load means what the data from the data volume disk is load we load the data into what main memory and when you say unload the memory the data in the memory is been dropped right we we'll have two operations one is load and unload when you say load the table the data of this table is loaded into main memory bus and when i say unload this table the data from data of this table in the main memory is been dropped okay so that is like explicit statements explicitly you execute commands like load and load that is what happens right now what i want let's say there is a table which is already loaded into main memory bus will it be unloaded by if you use explicitly statement unload it unloads but by default it does not unload but by def, let's say when when the main memory is full it has to unload some tables which table should it unload first depends on the property called unload priority you like you can specify the unload priority from 0 to 9 higher the num higher the priority it means it will be unloaded earlier so while the table is created we can un, we can specify the unload priority it unload priority cheppadam valla unload ayipodu table inga mana concept like illa loading ke dannu like illa it will not unload it immediately when when the uh, let's say that when the tables are loaded at some point of time the memory gets filled then it has to it has free the memory space for what mm, it has free the memory space then it has to unload some tables now which table is unloaded first depends on the priority the table with highest priority will be unloaded first from the main memory okay so while creating the table you can specify this unload priority it is 0 to 9 uh, higher the number it's uh, unload earliest okay and 0 ante kodu inga wait chesa that's a table last it is unloaded so you can control it so i want it as 5 and medium yeah. see with this statement am i unloading or loading cheyadam lo one property setup chesina ante and loading the Uh, loading the table into main memory unloading will be all data manipulation statement this is all about create you, while creating table you don't worry about that we are just setting up the unload priority flag saying when this table is loaded into main memory if it if the concept comes about unloading this table must be unloaded first or this not, should not be unloaded first and by using this unload priority okay and so this set this atla even if you look at this table which is by default created you have this unload priority by default set and as what 5 you can always by using the alter statement you can alter the property of unload priority 9 or atle but and generally for tables like psa all the stuff we would set that as generally we would not store in an atle but let's say i got ods uh, ods active table which i'm not frequently using but now that so i would unload those tables earlier than the cubes which i am really using it for reporting more frequently i got two dso's one is very frequently used one is not frequently used the one which is frequently used i'll try to unload it uh, i'll not unload it earlier so i'll set the priority to something like 3 or 2 the 
the vertices which are not really frequently used, I'll set the priority to eight or nine. So those this vertices will be unloaded first than the other vertices. I'm trying to control it. Yeah. If you use the unload, then it will drop the data in main table. No, 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 no. Either you load or unload. No, none of the data is dropped in the main or delta. No. Okay. But if what is, it will default store the data in main table only, right? And actually, column store will have delta and main, right? It will have the same images in the disk also. Don't have to worry. When when you say when I unload the table, I lose the data in the delta table. Nothing. Nothing is lost. Don't have to worry. Okay. So we'll stop it here, boss, and. Tomorrow we have to get into part listening and that stuff. And there's some we're just touching on data definition, and then we'll get into views and synonyms like this. Okay, fine. Thanks. If you use unload them, then it will drop the data. Nothing is dropped when you unload. Okay.